Hey everyone, I'm April. I'm the owner and creator over at Tis So Sweet. I make custom bags, purses, totes, zipper pouches, and other unique handmade items. I love all things Disney and absolutely enjoy making bags that bring joy to your heart and a smile to your face. If you would like to follow me in my shop, you can find me over on Instagram at Tis So Sweet. I'd love to connect with you and get to know you. Now that we've gotten to know each other some, I would like to welcome you to our Sewing 101 series here on Auntie Tay's YouTube channel. In this series, we will be going over the basics. I'm talking from the ground up. We will be going over how to navigate your sewing machine, how to read a basic sewing pattern, basic sewing lingo, and so much more. So with all that being said, let's get sewing. All right, today we're gonna to be talking all about interfacing. We're gonna go over what it is, why it's necessary, when do you need to use it, and how to use it. Plus, I'm gonna show you some examples. What is interfacing? So interfacing is a material that you adhere or sew on to your fabrics or materials to give it a little bit more structure or strength in your project. Interfacing also comes in several different ways. There are some woven interfacing, which it feels like just normal fabric with a little bit of glue dots on the back. There is foam interfacing where you either have to sew it onto your fabrics or you have to iron it on. Then there's other things like stabilizers and harder interfacings that make something really stiff. So why is interfacing necessary? Interfacing is necessary so that your bag or your pouch or clothing, whatever you are making, has a little bit more structure or shape to it and it will hold up over time. Sometimes without interfacing, fabrics can wear down and break down over time causing holes or just deconstruction. And let's face it, nobody wants that. So when do you need to use interfacing? Well, let's just show you this. See this piece of cotton? It's super cute, but it is very flimsy right now. And this wouldn't hold up very well over time if I were to make, let's say, a zipper pouch. But if I added this interfacing to this fabric, it makes it a little bit more stiff and have a little bit more strength to it. So that way, when you're putting your makeup or you're putting your pens in and out of your zipper pouch, it keeps its shape and its structure. So how do you use it? Most interfacing has glue dots or a layer of glue that is activated with heat. Some are double-sided and can be adhered to both sides. Some also have to be sewn onto your fabrics in order to attach it to your project. So let's talk about all the different types that I have in front of me. Now, first and foremost, I'm a bag maker. So most of my knowledge is for bag making. There are other interfacings that are used for clothing and embroidery, but today we are just gonna be going over the basic interfacings. So here in front of me, I have seven different interfacings. We're gonna go over each one. This first one is called Fusible Fleece, also known as Thermalam on the bolt at Joann's. Fusible Fleece makes your final project a little bit floppy and has a padded feeling to it. When attaching to your fabric, you want to keep your iron moving with even pressure, or you can use an easy press. I wouldn't suggest using a heat press on this one because it would really, really flatten the material. So stick to an iron or a easy press, something that you can move around with even pressure. Here's an example of a final bag made with just fusible fleece. Next up is woven interfacing. This is also known as ShapeFlex 101, and there's tons of other different brands and titles to this, but basically known as woven interfacing. This has glue dots on one side of it, and then it's a woven or cotton on the other side. Woven interfacing helps strengthen your fabric, but also allows it to still be movable and flexible in your project. I use woven interfacing on any of my woven fabrics, meaning cotton, cotton lycra, different things like that. Something that when you hold it up, it just flops down. So if I'm using cotton for my lining, then I will interface it with woven interfacing. That just gives the inside of a bag a lot of structure, like in this bag. I have also used woven interfacing on the outside of these bags, which will help them last for a long time. 
Next up is this DecoBond 809. This is a medium weight interfacing, so it's a little bit more structured than woven interfacing, and it actually kind of feels like paper. So on one side, it has the glue, but it's more of like a layer of glue than the dots that you can feel on it. And the other side is non-fusible. I mainly only use this in totes that I'm not using foam in or on my beauty bags like this one. And I only used it on the center panel to give it a little bit more stiffness. The only downside to 809 is that when you turn your bag right side out from the final construction, it tends to get a little bit wrinkly. So you just have to iron it out just a little bit more and work at it a little bit more to get all those wrinkles out. Here are two examples of foam interfacing. Now foam interfacing can be sew-in, like this one, or fusible, like this one. And also the fusible one can be one-sided fusible or both sides can be fusible. So why would you wanna use foam interfacing? Well, this is when you want your bag to have firm structure. You want it to stand up like this one. See how none of the sides fold over on themselves. It's standing up by itself. That's all because of the foam interfacing that is inside of it. Now on this bag, I used sew-in foam because just like the 809 that we talked about earlier, sometimes when you turn your bag right side out after you're done finally constructing it, it tends to have a lot of wrinkles and sometimes those wrinkles are really difficult to get out. However, I do have to say that within the first year of opening up my sewing business, I always used fusible foam. It was the easiest, it's what I knew what to work with, and it actually helped me learn more tips and tricks along the way. So, if you're looking for something to start out with, go ahead and try out fusible foam. That way you don't have to worry about all the intricacies of sew-in foam. But don't let that deter you from using sew-in foam. It is really great. The key is, is a lot of clips or pins to keep it in place as you are sewing it. Because if you don't pin or clip your foam to your fabric, it could shift and move as it goes through your sewing machine and then it turns out all wonky. All right, now we're gonna move on to these three fancy ones. I like to call them fancy because I didn't start using these till maybe a year ago. So let's go over them. This first one is called Peltex. See, it is super stiff. It stands up by itself without me even having to try. This is what I use for the bottom of my totes or in a part of my project or bag that I don't want to bend or give way much. This is not a material that you want to sew through. It's stiff enough that it could bend your needle while you're sewing. And if you were to sew over it, the needle could even possibly break. So when you are using Peltex, you want to keep this out of your seam allowances. And what I mean is the edge where your needle is going to be going as you're sewing. This material is fusible on one side. You can get it double-sided fusible as well if your project needs it. Here is a cut of Decoville Light. Now this is a replacement for foam or for 809. This is on down the road in your sewing journey. So test out the other ones first before you just jump into Decoville Light. But if you're a risk taker, hop into Decoville Light. You won't regret it. So the great thing about Decoville Light is that when you have your final product, you can easily get the wrinkles out of it. While it's a little bit more pricey than the 809, the end result is so much easier to manage. I know you can't tell it right now, but the feeling of this is quite rubbery, so you can feel that it has a little bit of bounce to it. My final example here is called Decoville Heavy. Now this is a replacement or a substitute for the Peltex that I showed earlier. This is also fusible on one side. It's another super stiff interfacing that you can put in the bottom of your bags, or if you're making like a case, you can put that in there so that way it doesn't get crushed or easily bend. Last but not least, I just wanted to touch on these real quick. I don't have examples of them, but there's tear away or wash away stabilizer. 
This is mainly used in embroidery projects. This gives the material that you are embroidering on some stability as your needle punches through the material over and over again. Then, once you are all done, you can either tear away the access, or if your project is able to be thrown into the wash, you can wash it and the excess will be washed away. Well, thanks so much for joining me today on Sewing 101 here on Auntie Tay's YouTube channel. I'm April from Tis So Sweet, and I'll see you later. Ooh.